In 2018, the Happiness Alliance hosted a panel at the 6th OECD World Forum, Statistics, Knowledge and Policy, the Future of Wellbeing. Rhonda Phillips, the Dean of Purdue Honors College, co-founder of the International Journal of Community Wellbeing, and past president of ISQUALS, the International Society for Quality of Life Studies, talked about a book she, myself, Lauren Zakansky, and Jean Crowder, former member of Parliament of the Canadian Government, have written to aid policymakers in putting happiness into place in government. I just want to share a little bit of it with you about some of the work we're involved in to uh, push forward some of the ideas uh, that you're hearing at this conference, some of the things that we've been exposed to around uh, how do we take these ideas that are central to happiness and how does that translate into policy, into things that are actionable to make things happen at the local level, the regional level, national level, whatever level of government that you're looking at or concerned with. So I just wanted to take a, a few minutes and tell you uh, some of these things that we're working on. The, the new handbook, the Happiness Policy Handbook, is uh, really going to provide policymakers, community activists, organizers, and others who are interested in trying to see happiness become part of their local governance, their local governments, um, and, and say, how can you make a difference in your own community, in your own region, um, so that people can have equal opportunities to pursue happiness? And I really like this diagram not only because it's bright and helps wake us up early in the morning, but also it has a lot of the dimensions that we talk about. Uh, sometimes we, we use them interchangeably, sometimes not so much, but uh, we hear a lot of these words around these ideas of when we're trying to measure things, when we're trying to make things better, and it includes things like uh, well-being, uh, better life, as the OECD says, their better life index. Happiness and well-being sort of used uh, co-jointly many times, and then there are um, obviously some wider measures that we can use and employ for, for gauging and, and our metrics. Quality of life is another aspect that we often see that's co-joined with this idea of happiness. It may be in the context of uh, community development as well as individual quality of life improvements. And then of course beyond gross domestic product, GDP. Uh, this is the idea of looking to is, is it goes beyond just simply economic measurements and, and going way back in economics, the root word of some of that is actually like the health of a household. So it's very different than what we think of economics today. But uh, how do we get back to that? Um, I also like one of the quotes says, it's, it's not a public policy for happiness. It's not about giving happiness, but just giving the uh, fundamental equal conditions so that people can pursue happiness for all and that it's not to exclusion or to the other. So what we do in this book, which is will be finished, uh, the manuscript goes to publisher next month, and so we hope to have it shortly thereafter, sometime early in the year. But it's uh, two sections, and it's written very clearly in accessible language. It's not a heavy uh, treatise on this. It's a, like, what can you actually do to make a difference in your own community? So the first section then begins with the context and the history and trajectory, gives some examples of, of what has been done in our pursuit uh, to the right of happiness. Um, and what happiness policy is, and what does this actually translate to? Sometimes they seem like esoteric ideas that we don't exactly know how to translate that into something actionable at the policy level. So uh, we give some examples of that. And then also the very important sustainability connection. You know, being a happy community, having happiness policies can help uh, achieve some of the sustainability goals of our communities. And then the second section is really about action plans. And so this is where it gets down to the nitty gritty, the examples of, of things like proclamations. It also gives ideas for community engagement. How would you go about doing that in different contexts and different situations? And then also about measuring happiness so that uh, we can talk about it. And we've actually got to be able to demonstrate that we're making progress towards some of those goals or we're not. We've got to be able to measure that in ways that are translatable to others, both citizens, activists, and others concerned, and policymakers. And then um, we also uh, you know, have a lot of explanations, a lot of forms, a lot of tools. So Appendix is, is quite large um, with, with things like the Happiness Policy Screening Tool. We also uh, give some explanation of how that can be used. Uh, things around using the social media to be able to 
to help uh, get a lot of discussion around happiness policy and how you would integrate that with your local community. So it's a very on the ground kind of guide. And, and we felt like this is what's needed because we can, we can talk a lot about what happiness is and you know, some of the, the lovely ideas around it, but how do you make that happen at your local government level? And that's why this one is, is very um, action oriented. Thank you. Learn more about the Happiness Policy Handbook and the tools and resources that you can use to bring about happiness in your life and in your community at happycounts.org.